Hello, welcome. This is Jennifer. I'm so glad you're here. Now, I planned on doing a video today where I shared some ideas for adding gels or pastes to your stenciled or stamped images for a little bit of shine. Now, I will be showing you that, but I also am going to talk a little bit about something a lot of YouTubers, especially me, uh, something we don't talk about often. So first, let's get started on creating these cards and adding some texture shine, and then I'll talk about that secret. It's not that big of a deal, I'm not trying to make it a big deal, but it's just something important to talk about. So let's get started creating. One of my favorite products for adding like a little bit of shimmer to my cards or metallic shine is Simon Hurley Lunar Pace. This is a beautiful product. It kind of is like a mayonnaise consistency when you put it on and it has beautiful color and a lot of shine. Dries beautifully. There are so many techniques you can do with it. In fact, I've done a video with Lunar Pace in the past. I'll link to it up here in the top right. Well, recently he's come out with some new colors. Here's a few of them that I'm showing you here. You can see they are just beautiful, beautiful shine from these. And you could use these for the technique I'm doing today. But I'm excited because Simon now has solar paste. Solar paste is a little bit different. It goes on very light, but it has a color shifting effect to it that is just really cool and great on top of stenciled or stamped images. So Solar Paste has a white base and then it has this shifting or iridescent powder in it as a colorant. These colors only show up when you tilt it in the light. So on white cardstock, it looks really subtle. You can see there at the top. But when you put it on darker cardstock, it'll dry and you'll be able to see the color and more of that shifting. Now, one of the really cool things about this is it has a white base, so you can add reinker to it to color it whatever color you want or you could put it over a water reactive ink and then it'll absorb that color, which I'll show you in a moment. So here you can see up on the top, it's very subtle on white and on the black, it will show up more. So this is what it looks like when it's wet. You can see the color shifting kind of look already, but when it's dry, look at this. See that beautiful pearly color shifting effect on the white? You can see the different kind of color to it. Then on the black, it really stands out. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna be using it on cardstock today. I'm going to be using it over ink. But I wanted to show you what it looked like on white and black. So you can imagine it would look great on different colored cardstocks too. Now I mentioned if you have a water reactive ink, like Distress Ink, you can put that down onto your cardstock, then put one of these light solar pastes on top, and it'll actually absorb that color underneath and turn that color when it dries. So here's what it looks like when it dries. It turns pink because of that pink ink behind it. So I thought it'd be fun to use these solar paste products over a stenciled or stamped image, and that's what we'll do today, and it'll give it some shine. So let's get started with my first examples where I use the solar paste over a layering stencil to create this floral image. Now you could use any paste, gels, or anything for this. I just thought the solar paste would be a great option. Now this is a new stamp set from Alex Siberia called Tulip Treasures. You can see there are two large images, a bunch of sentiments. There are hot foil plates that coordinate coordinating dyes that coordinate, and layering stencils that coordinate. All of these are sold separate, so you can pick and choose what you might be interested in. Now, I decided to use this stamp set today and skip the foiling, and then I'll use the layering stencils to color them in. There are two big stamps in the set. I'm just gonna use the one single large tulip image. Okay, so I have placed this stamp and some white cardstock into my Misty stamping tool, and I will use my anti-static powder tool, and then stamp this with Altenew's Black Obsidian Pigment Ink. This is a quick drying black pigment ink that's super crisp. I love this ink. What I'll do is I'll quickly add clear embossing powder to it, and because it's a pigment ink, it'll hold that powder and allow us to do heat embossing with it. So I'll use my heat gun to melt that powder, and now we have what looks like a black heat embossed image. I'll then use the coordinating die to cut it out. I have my Altenew Sticky Matte Grid. This grid is made of the same material as stamps, and what's cool is you can put your die cut on it, then put your stencil over it, and look at how it kind of suctions onto the stencil, and it won't move as you're inking. 
I'm masking off the stem area with a post-it note and only over the flower at the top, I'm applying a light lilac ink. You'll notice that I use a bunch of different brands of inks today. I love to mix and match and just choose the color I want instead of the brand. It really doesn't matter. Now I've moved my post-it note in over the stem and leaf area. I'm applying sprout ink from Concord and Ninth. So these are the most open areas of the stencil. So I'm putting the lightest color over these. All right, so I'll peel off the stencil and move on to the second stencil. And you can see how easy it is to line up and it suctions to that sticky mat. So I don't have to worry about it shifting. Now I'm using a bit darker color inks this time. On the bottom, I'll use Concord and Ninth Parsley ink. And on the top, I will use Gina K Designs Medium Lilac ink. I like that Gina has light, medium, and dark inks in the same color family, so it makes it really easy when you're doing layering stencils. You could use absolutely any inks for this that you want. I do recommend, if you're using the solar paste, to use a water reactive ink. If you're curious if your ink is water reactive, the best thing to do is just spread some of that ink onto cardstock and then spritz some water on it or sprinkle water on it. If the ink reacts to that water and like kind of softens there, then you know it's water reactive. Okay, so over the third stencil, I did my darkest colors. I have dark lilac, and then over the stem area, I'm doing Concord and Ninth Artichoke. After I've applied that color, I'll remove the stencil and you can see what we have so far, a beautiful image. Now there is this little center, I applied some Hero Arts pumpkin ink over that just for a pop of dark orange there at the center. So you could leave it as is, but I wanted to add some shine to it. Now the best way to do this, I felt, was to put a little temporary tape on the back of this die cut and put it on some scrap paper. It's easier to clean up this way. I will then put that same third stencil right on top. This is the same stencil we just used with the dark inks. Now over this, I'm applying the solar paste in the blue color over the petals and in the green color over the stems. So here we have the blue color. You see it's white, right? But it has that color shifting blue to it. And I thought it'd be pretty over this bluish purple flower. I'm using my Simon Hurley tool to apply some of that paste and then the other tool in his kit that allows you to spread it across. That tool is super handy with any kind of gels or paste that you use on a stencil. I'll even use it on a background later in this video. So I'm just spreading an even layer over that stencil. Again, this is the bluish color solar paste. Now I need to do the greenish color solar paste on the stem. So I'll put a little bit there on the bottom and then use that same tool to spread it smoothly over it. And I'm trying to keep this only over the stem and not up there on the flower. Now when you're using these pastes, you want to move a little quickly because you don't want this to dry on your tools or your stencil. You really want to make sure that you apply it, then quickly remove the stencil and wash the stencil and tool off, tools off in your sink. You don't want any of this to dry on it. So I'll apply that and kind of smooth it out. And you'll notice I'm starting to kind of have a hard time here. I'm starting to fidget with my stenciling. And I realize this is gonna be one of those days where I'm gonna struggle with my crafting. I'll talk more about that in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna clean off all my tools. And right now, that paste we put on looks very light because remember it goes on white. But over time, it absorbed that dark lilac ink that was behind it. And look at this, you have this beautiful paste that color shifts. You can see how it kind of shifts the color depending on how you tilt it in the light. And it's got that blue shine up on the top and the green shine on the leaves. And it's just gorgeous. So if you have layering stencils, try making that last layering stencil be a paste or a gel. This one's extra special because it's that solar paste that picks up that ink color underneath and gives that color shifting effect. Now you'll notice there's also some texture because I put it on kind of thick over that stencil. It's the thickness of the stencil, right? Because we smeared it across. Here's another thing that you could do. I created another flower using different colors of inks. This time I did a pink flower. I have my third and final stencil on there. I've already done the darkest color of ink. Now it's time to add some of the solar paste. 
So I'm masking off the flower and doing the green solar paste on the bottom, but this time I'm using my finger to apply it. And I'm just kind of smearing it over the openings of the stencil. This will put a lighter layer of the paste in the openings of the stencil. So if you want something a little more subtle or smooth, this is a good option. So I spread the green all over the openings, kind of wiping away some of the excess. I wanted a thin layer this time. Then I will do the same with the pink solar paste along the petals of the flowers, using my finger and really spreading that very thin over the stencil. And by the way, you can easily wipe this off your finger onto a baby wipe. Now I will remove the stencil, clean it, clean all my tools, close the bottle, and I have a thin layer of the solar paste. Now you could leave it as is, but I thought it would be neat to take my finger and kind of spread it a little bit so it blends in more with the flower. So here you'll see, I'll take my finger and just kind of smear it a little bit here and there, and that spreads that bit of shine. You wanna make sure you do this while it's still wet because remember, this is a very thin layer of the solar paste so it'll dry pretty quickly. But I thought this was a great way to kind of blend it in and give it a nice shimmery look. It'll dry much quicker than the other, which was much thicker too. There you can see that beautiful color shifting shine that we have on the flower and the petals. Now at this point, I was running out of time. I was packing to get ready for a trip and I didn't have time to make both of those flowers into cards. So I chose to do this one. But I, I think I liked that thinner layer of the solar paste better than the thicker layer. But both options are great. All right, now let's use the solar paste again, but this time on the background. This is a great way to use it to create your own like specialty cardstock with great shine to it. I started with white cardstock and the new Alex Siberia Me Me Meadow Magic background die. Now this cuts a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece and it does a pierced floral pattern that's beautiful. So over that pierced pattern, I am applying the purple color solar paste. I'll put a big glob of it at the top, then I'll use the scraping tool to just spread that across my cardstock. And what happens is it fills in those little pierced dots, but also spreads this uh, shine over my white cardstock. Now I'm gonna really scrape off as much as I can. And what I end up with is instead of just plain white cardstock, it has this color shifting shine to it. And that color shifting paste kind of fits into those little piercing uh, holes that we did with that background dye. And you get something that is just beautiful. So here I'm scraping off as much as I can. I'll put that back in the bottle. I will clean off all my tools. And then here we'll take a closer look at that background. It is beautiful. I wish you could see it in real life. It has this gorgeous kind of um, color shifting iridescent white look to it, like a pearl look that is just beautiful. And it is definitely a great way to step up your cardstock. You could do this on colored cardstock too if you want. Okay, so now that we have this shiny flower and a shiny white background, let's finish off the rest of the card. I wanted kind of a orchid color frame, so I used the Spellbinders Stylish Oval Dies, and I cut from a four and a quarter by five and a half inch orchid cardstock piece. I then am using that same meadow background die to create that piercing pattern, and it'll line up nicely with that kind of pearly looking white cardstock background we just did. Now I wanted dimension behind that orchid color frame that we just created. So I cut some more frames from white cardstock of the same size and I'm gluing it to the back. At this point, I was feeling kind of frazzled, like nothing was really working well. Here I had cut my white cardstock too big, so I'm kind of trimming off the extra with my scissors. When I did it, I accidentally cut the side of my purple frame. I was getting a little frustrated. And as I was doing this, I kept making more and more mistakes. As I was making those mistakes, I was thinking about my videos and thinking that it might be good to remind you all that the videos you get from me are edited videos. I edit out all of my mistakes. Like here I end up cutting some of the purple and it ends up having this curved edge and it looked bad. I'll fix it later. That stuff I usually edit out. Here's another example. I'm using the Alex Siberia 4U sentiment die set and I cut the 4 and U from white cardstock and then also from black glossy cardstock. 
I went to glue the U black glossy die cut on top of the white one and I tore my die cut. I tore the Y off of the OU. Now, normally I would edit that out just to save you the time, but here I'm showing you, like I tore it apart but I, I, by accident, but I'm just gluing it back together and no one will ever know. I make those kind of mistakes a lot when I'm crafting. In fact, here I was gonna use foam tape around the outside edge on the back of this frame just to save time. And I was having the worst time with the foam tape that I had. I ran out of my good type of foam tape and I had a different kind and it was sticky and the release paper wasn't coming off. I ended up just tearing it all off and just die cutting some more white frames to glue to the back for dimension. I was so frustrated but I edit that out because I don't wanna waste your time. I'm trying to give you a professional video where you can learn something. I feel like teachers do that. You know, They do a lot behind the scenes to make sure that what they teach you is like a finished, complete uh, lesson, I guess. And that's what I'm trying to do. So you'll see me continue to fluster here. At this point, I thought I'd glue it to my note card and then I decided, Oh, that didn't work because I wanted a white trim and I noticed that the edge of that orchid frame was curvy. You can't really see it in the video, but it was it was bugging me. I don't know. It was bugging me in real life. So at this point, I was using my liquid glue and I said, oh, forget that. I took that note card off. I'll save it for later. And so I am now gluing a new orchid frame on top of the orchid frame I already had. So if you maybe make a mistake or something doesn't look right, just cover it up. I'm covering it up with a new orchid frame where I didn't cut the edge kind of wonky. It gives it a nice clean look and no one will ever know I struggled except those of you watching. I also realized I wanted a white trim on this, right? And when I went to stick it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, there was no trim. So I made a bigger note card. Instead of cutting this frame down, I just made a bigger note card. This note card is about four and a half by five and three quarter inches. And since that's bigger, I'll have to use a bigger envelope. I'll just use an A6 envelope. But it was the best way for me to kind of resurrect this card. So I think it's really important for you all to remember that the videos you see on YouTube are things that um, the person probably edited or they tried making it off screen before they made it like live on screen or they you know are have been doing this for years and just don't make ma many mistakes i assure you i make a boatload of mistakes i also think it's important to let you know that people who do this card making for a living or a lot we still struggle with our crafting. Like here, I'm really struggling to get these letters right where I want them. I struggled with this design all day. I couldn't get it just right. So that's part of the process that you don't see in videos. So if you sit down to make a card and you struggle or make mistakes, know that that is perfectly normal, totally normal and part of the process. Now here is my completed card. Look at the shine on that flower and how the color shifts as you turn it in the light. And we have the same on that white background. Now I'll show it here in my craft room and then I'll show a video where I took it out in natural light and you can see more of that color shifting. It really is obvious in real life. My video uh, camera just doesn't capture it well. So normally, if I was filming this video and I had those struggles and those little mistakes that I made, I would have edited them out. And you would see this video and never know that I struggled that much. So I thought it was important to let you know that that happens behind the scenes. And I bet it happens with a lot of crafters. I know Gina Kay and I were talking about it once. We all have a hard time with the creative process sometimes. And by the way, here is a closer look at the two different versions. On the pink flower, I kind of spread the uh, solar paste thin. On the purple flower, I left it nice and thick. Two different looks, both are beautiful. And by the way, look at that color shift on that purple flower. It shifts from kind of like a purple color to a blue color. Now you can do these card designs with other paste and gels. I just thought these were really fun. All right, let's do another example. This time I'm using a stencil set from Alex Siberia called Sun Rays. So there's these layering stencils and there's a hot foil plate and you could use these together or separately. I'll start, first start by using the hot foil plate along with my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine. I have a piece of smooth white cardstock 
and I'll create a hinge at the top of the plate using a piece of tape. I just find that's helpful in keeping everything still as you do the foiling process. I will then slide underneath it a piece of silver foil. This is the prism which has a lot of iridescent shine to it. Now you'll notice first I cut a piece and it's too small. This is just kind of how my day is going. So um, I'll just save this piece for another project and I'll go ahead and cut another one. You know, I, I do things like this often, it just gets edited out usually. But I do have a little bowl of foil that I have left over. So I'll just put that in there. It'll get used later in the future. Okay, so I cut a new piece. I'll slide this under so the pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the hot foil plate. Then I'll put that onto my glimmer machine upside down and put two shims on top of it that come with the machine. I'll press the timer button. When it's done running, I will take that platform out, run it through my die cut machine, which will provide the pressure. Between the two, we'll end up with a beautiful foiled image. Now I trim that down a little bit so that I can add it onto my Altenew sticky mat and have the stencils kind of hanging off the side, which will help to hold it in place. Now there are four stencils and you can use all of them and cover complete background, or you can use just two or three of them and have some white areas showing. For this example, I'm using all four of them. I'm lining up the first stencil with the foiling that we have done, and I'm applying a Gina K Designs Light Orchid ink. Now, you'll notice that my ink goes on very pink at first. That's because I took a pink blending brush and I didn't clean it before picking up the orchid color. So I'll have to go over the same area to have more of a uniform color. Usually if I have a blending brush and I'm switching between colors, like from pink to purple or whatever, I'll rub the excess ink off onto a cloth, but I didn't think of it at the time. So I just go back over it until I have as smooth of an orchid result as I can get. Okay, so now let's move on to the second stencil. You can see how handy it is to have this Altenew sticky mat to hold those stencils in place as you do your inking. But whatever method you like, you could use tape, you could use um, any kind of stencil magnetic mat. There's lots of options out there. Okay, this time I did clean off my brush and I am switching to a light pink from Gina K Designs. And I'm applying this and I was trying to go light handed, but you'll notice that there's some splotchy, heavier areas. I just decided to go with it. I also realized I didn't line that one up very well. So you'll see that some of this overlaps, but I feel like in the end it works just fine. So don't worry if you don't get things lined up just right, it'll all look nice in the end. This time I'm coming in with Hero Arts Pale Tomato, one of my favorite colors. It's like a light red or, or reddish peach color. And I put that on light handed. Now I'm coming in with the last stencil and I'll use that same pale tomato, but I'll go heavier handed this time. Now over this stencil, I'll also apply some of the solar paste. So I will choose that pink solar paste and apply that right on top of this darker red. And remember, when you apply solar paste over an ink that reacts with water, this one does, it'll absorb that color and pick up that color. So uh, I'll take this off first so you can see what it looks like. You got that beautiful foil outline and some stenciling that's not perfect, but that's okay. All right, so I'm lining that last stencil up and I taped it in place. And at this point, I could not find my palette knife. I had just used it earlier, couldn't find it right now. It's somewhere lost on my desk. So being a little frustrated, I just used the back end of a bone folder until I can uncover my palette knife on my desk. This is how my day is going. Just these little things, you know, that just happen sometimes. All right, so you can see how easy it is to spread the solar paste over the stencil using the stencil tool. By the way, these stencil tools, there's I think two of these in a pack along with the palette knife, really handy and a very reasonable price. Okay, so we'll carefully take that off and set that aside and give it time to dry. And that solar paste will absorb that pale tomato ink that's behind it and look at this beautiful result. You can see that color shifting shine and that raised texture that we get by using it over the stencil. Now at this point, I wanted to trim this down so that the center of those rays is kind of offset. So I am kind of figuring out where I want to put this for you sentiment. 
By the way, that for you is from Alex Siberia. There's a shadow die and the words included. I do have those extra strips, which I love that I'll definitely save for another card. For now, I'll glue that for you right over that little shiny spot there in the middle. However, I think you could leave that and put maybe a sentiment strip instead. So many ways you could use these stencils. Once I have that glued in place, I did cut some scrap white cardstock pieces to glue behind that stenciled piece. Just so it has some nice raised dimension, you could use foam tape if you prefer. And when I went to glue that onto the top of my four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, I realized I cut this stenciled piece to be the wrong size. It's not the right proportions, that's okay. All I'm going to do is trim about a quarter of an inch off the bottom of that white note card. I don't feel it's important to stick to a certain size card every time. My last card was a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit smaller. I just made them both work. Now to add a little sparkle, I am using some iridescent sequins, just going with the simple design here. I really wanted to allow a lot of that background to show. So there you can see that color shifting solar paste, so pretty and I really like how it goes with that iridescent foil we used and the sequins. And here it is in natural light. You can really see that color shifting that's so pretty. So both of these cards are a reminder that you can use paste and gels with one of your layering stencils to really make your project stand out. So I wanted to use those stencils again for another card. I didn't get time to finish this one, but I wanted to show you the background and you can also see me make a couple more mistakes here. In this case, I'm putting blue inks over the stencils and I used three of the stencils to get this. You'll notice I didn't line them up well. I don't have a nice circle there in the center, but I figure when I cover that up, no one will ever know. And I thought I'd change things up. Instead of using the fourth stencil to fill in the remaining areas, I'm gonna leave it how it is and take one of the stencils and watch this, I'm gonna flip it over and it offsets it, gives it this really cool design that overlaps, completely changing the look of these stencils. So this is a reminder that if you get some geometric stencils, something like this, a repeating pattern, try rotating or flipping or offsetting your stencils a bit to change up the look of it. Now at this point, I still cannot find my palette knife. It was under a huge pile of things as I was creating. So you can see I used my bone folder again and now I'm spreading this out with the big uh, spreading tool here. Once I've spread that out evenly, I go to take off my stencil. And when I did so, I dragged the tape through that solar paste. You can see on the bottom right of that inked background, I messed up the solar paste there. And I didn't wanna to have to start over. I didn't wanna to have to try to cover that. So I was brave and I lined my stencil back up with that wet solar paste. And I'll just reapply it in that corner and re-smooth everything out. So know these kind of things happen when those of us who do these YouTube videos, as we're creating, these little things happen all the time. We just usually edit them out to save you the time. I really think it's important to know that these kind of mistakes also are little bloopers are ways that you learn when you're crafting. Crafting is all about trying things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. And sometimes you'll do things like drag your tape through your paste and the next time you'll remember not to do that. All right, so this time I'll pull that stencil straight up and now we have good results. I'll give that some time to dry and check this out. Look at that beautiful color shifting. You can see some of the color showing through it. Actually, the, the solar paste kind of picked up the ink behind it and added that color to it. It's so beautiful. So think of different ways you can use your layering stencils like this where you might be able to rotate or flip it to change the look that you get. Just a little added bonus there at the end. Hopefully I'll get to turn that into a card in a couple days. So there you have some ideas for using your pacer gels with your layering stencils. At the end, I will link to a video where I show using lunar paste or other paste and gels with your stamped images. So be sure to check out that video. I also link to all these supplies below. And remember, we all make mistakes in crafting. We all kind of have those struggling times. Just stick with it. And at the end of the day, I hope you love the things you create. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.